This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Caradimos. We're going to take a look at the Pythagorean Theorem and prove that it uh, is a legitimate relationship. So uh, over here you're going to notice that I have a figure, and this is the figure I'm going to use for proving the Pythagorean uh, relationship. Uh, there are hundreds of ways to prove the Pythagorean relationship. I'm just going to use this way. Uh, but you can do a search and find easily many ways to do it. All right, so take a look at this figure. Uh, it turns out that the large blue figure is a square uh, because I want you to picture right angles there. We're going to assume that there's right angles at the corners. Um, and I know it's a square also because the sides are all equilateral. It's A plus B, right? It's A and B, so it's A plus B and a side. A plus B and a side, all the way around with right angles. So it's an equiangular, equilateral, quadrilateral, making it a square. Same thing here with this white uh, quadrilateral. Uh, picture right angles there, and it's equilateral. So again, that's a square as well. All right, so we have this tilted square within a large square. All right, now the key to uh, proving the Pythagorean relationship with this figure is to calculate the area. All right, so I, I want to, uh, you know, picture taking the area of this figure, and we're going to do it by looking at the large square first. So the whole side here, right? If I take a look at this whole side, this is a plus b. If I take a look at this side, it's also a plus b. Right? It's a and b, so it's a plus b. So every side is a plus b in length. So if I want to calculate the area of the square, remember it's side times side, so it's a plus b times a plus b. So in the language of math, it's a plus b times a plus b, or a plus b squared. All right, another way to prove, or I should say not prove, but to uh, calculate the area of this is instead to look at all the individual parts. Uh, like, for instance, I'm going to take the area of the four triangles, right? So there's four triangles. Here's one triangle, two, three. There's four triangles. And then we have this fifth piece right here, which is a square. So there's five pieces. So I'm going to calculate the area of all those pieces separately. All right, well, let's calculate the area of one triangle. Now, they're all equilateral. I'm, I'm sorry, not equilateral. They're all uh, equal in size. They're equivalent, right? They're congruent triangles. That's the word I was searching for. They're congruent triangles. So I'm just going to calculate the area of one of these triangles and then multiply it by 4. All right, well, what's the area of 1? Well, the area of a right triangle, remember we're assuming a right angle there, the area of a right triangle is base times height divided by 2. So it's going to be A times B divided by 2, or half. Right? One of them is half A times B. Right? That's going to be the area of one triangle. Right? The base times the height. Multiply those two and then divide by two. Or take half. Same thing. That's the area of one. But remember, we've got four. Four triangles. So I'm going to put a four here. There's four of those triangles. All right. But we also have the area of this square. So remember, the area of a square is side times side, so that's c times c, or c squared. Okay, so we got c squared there. So if I want the total area, I'm going to take these four triangles, and I'm going to add it to the square, the large square. So I got four triangles and a square, add them all together, and that would be the total area. And they have to be equal, because it's the same figure, same figure, just calculating the area two different ways. All right, so let's see. If I multiply A plus B times A plus B, maybe I could even show this quickly over here on the side. This is like uh, I usually, when I multiply polynomials, I usually make a box like this. A plus B. I got A plus B. I multiply A times A. This is just a multiplication table. A times B, A times B, and then a B times B is B squared. So together, that's going to make A squared. 
I got AB and AB. So if I've got AB and AB, these two together, AB and AB, they're going to make two ABs. I've got two of them, right? I've got one there, one there that makes two total. And I've got a B squared right there. All right. That's what happens when I square that binomial. All right, and uh, let's see. Four times a half, that's two, right? Or half of four is two. So this is two AB plus C squared, right? Just bringing down that C squared. So after just cleaning things up a little bit, you can see what I'm getting. Now I'm going to subtract 2AB from both sides because I notice that I want to cancel it. I've got a 2AB on both sides. So if I subtract 2AB from both sides, that's going to cancel those terms. Okay, so let's see. Everything, uh, these guys are going to cancel, and the only thing I'm going to have left is the A squared and the B squared. So I'm going to have a squared plus b squared. And these two cancel. So the only thing I have left over there is the c squared. And voila, I have it. That is the proof. And that's the relationship that we're working with. Now, if you go back to the triangles, right, and, and actually take a look at the triangles, it will fall into place as it should. So. Um, Okay, remember we were talking about this situation here where this was A. It's one of the sides of the right triangle. This is B, another side of the right triangle. And remember, if this is our right angle here, right, we assume that there's a right angle there. Opposite of that is the hypotenuse, C. So C is the hypotenuse, and those are the two legs. So I got legs here. These are the legs of the right triangle. And then this is the hypotenuse. And there you have it. I have the Pythagorean relationship proven. Okay, make sure you go to mathguide.com. Check out all our activities, videos, and uh, interactive quizzes. Take care.